December 1847 Epistle The Latter-day Saints Millennial Star General Epistle from the Council of the Twelve Apostles to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Abroad, dispersed throughout the earth. Greeting. Beloved brethren, at no period since the organization of the Church on the 6th of April, 1830, have the Saints been so extensively scattered, and their means of receiving information from the proper source so limited, as since their expulsion from Illinois. And the time has now arrived when it would be profitable for you to receive, by our epistles, such information and instruction as the Father hath in store, and which he has made manifest by his Spirit. Knowing the designs of our enemies, we left Nauvoo in February, 1846, with a large pioneer company for the purpose of finding a place where the saints might gather and dwell in peace. The season was very unfavorable, and the repeated and excessive rains and scarcity of provision retarded our progress, and compelled us to leave a portion of the camp in the wilderness at a place we called Garden Grove, composed of an enclosure for an extensive farm and sixteen houses, the fruits of our labor. And soon after, from similar causes, we made another location, called Mount Pisgah, leaving another portion of the camp, and after searching the route, made the road and bridges over a multitude of streams, for more than three hundred miles, mostly on lands then occupied by the Potawatomi Indians, and since vacated in favor of the United States, lying on the south and west, and included within the boundary of Iowa. We arrived near Council Bluffs on the Missouri River during the latter part of June, where we were met by Captain J. Allen from Fort Leavenworth, soliciting us to enlist five hundred men in the service of the United States. To this call to, of our country we promptly responded, and before the middle of July more than five hundred of the brethren were embodied in the Mormon battalion, and on the march for California by way of Fort Leavenworth, under command of Lieutenant Colonel J. Allen, leaving hundreds of wagons, teams, and families destitute of protectors and guardians on the open prairie in a savage country far from the abodes of civilized life and farther still from any place where they might hope to locate. Our camp, although aware of a cold northern winter approaching, with all attendant evils, famine, risk of life at an unhealthy climate, Indian depredations, and everything of a like nature that would tend to make life gloomy, responded to this call of the President with all the alacrity that is due from children to a parent. And when the strength of our camp had taken its departure in the battalion, the aged, the infirm, the widow, and the fatherless that remained, full of hope and buoyant with faith, determined to prosecute their journey, a small portion of which went as far as the Pawnee Mission, where, finding it too late to pass the mountains, they turned aside to winter on the banks of the Missouri, at the mouth of the running water, about 250 miles northwest of the Missouri settlements, while the far more extensive and feeble numbers located at this place, called by us Winter Quarters, where upwards of 700 houses were built in the short space of about three months, while the great majority located on Potawatomi lands. In July, there were more than 2,000 emigrating wagons between this and Nauvoo. In September 1846, an infuriated mob, clad in all the horrors of war, fell on the saints who had remained in Nauvoo for want of means to remove, murdered some, and drove the remainder across the Mississippi into Iowa, where destitute of houses, tents, food, clothing, or money, they received temporary assistance from some benevolent souls in Quincy, St. Louis, and other places, whose names will be ever remembered with gratitude. But at that period the saints were obliged to scatter to the north, east, and west, wherever they could find shelter and procure employment. And hard as it is to write, it must ever remain a truth on the pages of history that while the flower of Israel's camp were sustaining the wings on the American eagle by their influence and arms in a foreign country, their brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, and children were driven by mob violence from a free and independent state of the same national republic and were compelled to flee from the fire, the sword, the musket, and the cannon's mouth, as from the demon of death. From that time to this, the Latter-day Saints have been roaming without home, from Canada to New Orleans, from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, and many have taken up their abode in foreign lands. Their property in Hancock County, Illinois, was literal or no better than confiscated. Many of their houses were burned by the mob, and they were obliged to leave most of that remained without sale and those who bargained, sold, almost for a song, for the influence of their enemies was to cause such a diminution of the value of property that from a handsome estate was seldom realized enough to remove the family comfortably away, and thousands have since been wandering to and fro, destitute, afflicted, and distressed, for the common necessaries of life, 
or, unable to endure, have sickened and died by hundreds, while the temple of the Lord is left solitary in the midst of our enemies, an enduring monument of the diligent and integrity of the saints. Lieutenant Colonel Allen died at Fort Leavenworth, much lamented by the, the Mormon battalion who proceeded en route by the way of Santa Fe, from whence a small portion who were sick returned to Pueblo to winter, while the remainder continued their march, mostly on half rations or meat without salt, making new roads, digging deep wells in the desert, leveling mountains, performing severe labors, and undergoing the utmost fatigue and hardship ever endured by infantry, as reported by Colonel Cook their commanding officer, and arrived in California in the neighborhood of, of San Diego with the loss of very few men. Soon after the battalion left the bluffs, three of the council took their departure for England, where they spent the winter preaching and setting in order all things pertaining to the church, and returned to this place in the spring of 1847, as did also the camp from running water for provisions. On April 14th, the remainder of the council, in company of 143 pioneers, left this place in search of a location, and making a new road, a majority of more than 1,000 miles westward, arrived at the Great Basin in the latter part of July, where we found a beautiful valley and some 20 by 30 miles in extent, with a lofty range of mountains on the east, capped with perpetual snow, and a beautiful line of mountains on the west, watered with daily showers. The Utah Lake on the south, hid by a range of hills, with the delightful prospect of the beautiful waters of the Great Salt Lake on the northwest, extending as far as the eye can reach, interspersed with lofty islands and a continuation of the valley or opening on the north, extending along the eastern shore about sixty miles to the mouth of Bear River. The soil of the valley appeared good, but will require irrigation to promote vegetation, though there are many small streams emptying in from the mountains, and the West Jordan, Utah outlet, passes through from the south to north. The climate is warm, dry, and healthy. Good salt abounds at the lake. Warm, hot, and cold springs are common. Mill sites excellent, but the valley is destitute of timber. The box, the fir, the pine, the sugar maple, etc. may be found on the mountains sufficient for consumption until more can grow. In this valley we located a site for a city to be called the Great Salt Lake City of the Great Basin, North America and for the convenience of the saints, instituted and located the Great Basin Post Office at this point. The city is surveyed in blocks of ten acres, eight lots to a block, with streets eight rods wide, crossing at right angles. One block is reserved for a temple, and several more in different parts of the city for public grounds. Soon after our arrival in the valley, we were joined by that portion of the battalion who had been stationed at Pueblo, and a small camp of the saints from Mississippi, who had wintered at the same place, who united with the pioneers in plowing, planting, and sowing near 100 acres with a great variety of seeds, and in laying the foundation of a row of houses around a 10-acre block, and nearly completing the same on one side. Materials for brick and stone buildings are abundant. After tarrying four or five weeks, most of the pioneers commenced their return, nearly destitute of provision, accompanied by a part of the battalion, who were quite destitute, except a very small quantity of beef, which was soon exhausted. The company had to depend for their subsistence on wild beasts such as buffalo, deer, antelope, etc., which most of the way were very scarce, and many obtained were exceedingly poor and unwholesome. Between the Green and Sweetwater rivers we met 566 wagons of the emigrating saints on their way to the valley. At our last encampment with whom we had 50 horses and mules stolen by the Indians, and a few days after we were attacked by a large war party of Sioux who drove off many of our horses, but most of these we recovered. Our route was by Fort Bridger, the South Pass, Fort John, Laramie, and from thence on the north bank of the Platte to Winter Quarters, where we arrived on the 31st of October, all well, having performed this long and tedious journey with ox as well as horse teams, and with little food except wild flesh, without losing a single man, although many were sick when we left in the spring, insomuch that they were unable to walk until we had traveled more than one-half of the outward distance. On the eleventh instant, fifteen of the battalion arrived from California with a pilot from the valley, having suffered much on their return from cold and hunger, with no provisions part of the way, but a little horse flesh of the worst kind. From these brethren we received the intelligence that the battalion was discharged in California in July, agreeably to the time of their enlistment, that a portion of the battalion constituting a company under Captain Davis had re-enlisted to sustain a military post in California that many had commenced labor to procure means to return, that a small portion had come on to the great Salt Lake City, where they found the immigrants, which we passed in the mountains, alive and in good health and spirits, except three deaths, 
and that some of the battalion, who had left the valley with them, had stopped on the Sweetwater searching for buffalo, who, with others in all about thirty, arrived here on the eighteenth instant, penniless and destitute, having suffered much from cold and hunger, subsisting on their worn-out mules and horses. All who possibly could went to the valley this season, and the saints now in this vicinity have had to depend on their own resources, in labor for their sustenance, which, on account of the absence of those engaged in the government service, the sickness that had prevailed in the camp, and the destruction of the cattle by the Indians, consists mostly of corn, with a few garden vegetables. The saints in this vicinity are bearing their privations in meekness and patience, and making all their exertions tend to their removal westward. Their hearts and all their labors are towards the setting sun, for they desire to be so far removed from those who have been their oppressors, that there shall be an everlasting barrier between them and future persecution. And although as a people we have been driven from state to state, and although Joseph and Hiram, our prophet and patriarch, were murdered in cold blood, while in government duress, and under the immediate control, inspection, and supervision of the government, and government officers, we know and feel assured that there are many honest, noble, and patriotic souls now living under that government, and under other similar governments in the sister states of, of the great confederacy, who would loathe the shedding of innocent blood, and were it in their power, would wipe the stain from the nation. If such would clear their garments in the public eye, and before God they must speak out, they must proclaim to the world their innocence and their hatred, and detestation of such atrocious and unheard of acts, but with this we have nothing to do, only with love, honesty, and right wherever we find them. The cause is between them, their country, and their God, and we again reiterate what we have often said, and what we have ever shown by our conduct, that, notwithstanding all our privations and sufferings, we are more ready than any other portion of the community to sustain the constitutional institutions of our mother country, and will do the utmost for them if, if permitted. And we say to all saints throughout the world, be submissive to the law that protects you in your person, rights, and property, in whatever nation or kingdom you are, and suffer wrong rather than do wrong. This we have ever done, and mean still to continue to do. We anticipate, as soon as circumstances will permit, to petition for a territorial government in the Great Basin. In compliance with the wishes of the sub-agents, we expect to vacate the Omaha lands in the spring. Thus, brethren, we have given you a brief idea of what has transpired among us since we left Nauvoo, the present situation of the saints in this vicinity, and of our feelings and views in general, as preparatory to the reply which we are about to give to the cry of the saints from all quarters. What shall we do? Gather yourselves together speedily, near to this place, on the east side of the Missouri River, and if possible be ready to start from hence by the first of May next or as soon as grass is sufficiently grown, and go to the great Salt Lake City with breadstuff sufficient to sustain you until you can raise grain the following season. Let the saints who have been driven and scattered from Nauvoo and all others in the western states gather immediately to the east bank of the river, bringing with them all the young stock of various kinds they possibly can, and let all the saints in the United States and Canada gather to the same place by the, sa by the first spring navigation, or as soon as they can, bringing their money, goods, and effects with them. And so far as they can consistently gather young stock by the way, which is much needed here and will be ready sale, and when here, let all who can go directly over the mountains, and those who cannot, let them go immediately to work at making improvements, raising grain and stock on the lands recently vacated by the Potawatomi Indians and owned by the United States. And by industry, they can soon gather sufficient means to prosecute their journey. In a year or two, their young cattle will grow into teams. By interchange of labor, they can raise their own grain and provisions and build their own wagons, and by sale of their improvements to citizens who will gladly come and occupy, they can replenish their clothing and thus speedily and comfortably procure an outfit. All saints who are coming on this route will do well to furnish themselves with woolen or winter instead of summer clothing, generally as they will be exposed to many chilling blasts before they pass the mountain heights. We have named the Potawatomi lands as the best place for the brethren to assemble on the route, because the journey is so very long that they must have a stopping place, and this is the nearest point to their final destination, which makes it not only desirable, but necessary. And as it is a wilderness country, it will not infringe on the rights and privileges of anyone and yet is so near western Missouri that a few days' travel will give them an opportunity of trade, if necessity requires, and this is the best general rendezvous that now presents, without intruding on the rights of others. To the saints in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and adjacent islands and countries, we say, emigrate as speedily as possible to this vicinity, looking to and following the counsel of the Presidency at Liverpool, 
shipping to New Orleans, and from thence direct to Council Bluffs, which will save much expense. Those who have but little means, and little or no labor, will soon exhaust that means if they remain where they are. Therefore it is wisdom that they remove without delay, for here is land on which by their labor they can speedily better their condition for their further journey. And to all saints in any country bordering upon the Atlantic we would say, pursue the same course. Come immediately and prepare to go west, bringing with you all kinds of choice seeds of grain, vegetables, fruits, shrubbery, trees, and vines, everything that will please the eye, gladden the heart, or cheer the soul of man that grows upon the face of the whole earth. Also the best stock of beast, bird, and fowl of every kind. Also the best tools of every description and machinery for spinning or weaving and dressing cotton, wool, flax, and silk, etc., etc., or models and descriptions of the same, by which they can construct them. And the same in relation to all kinds of farming utensils and husbandry, such as corn shellers, grain threshers and cleaners, smut machines, mills, and every implement and article within their knowledge that can tend to promote the comfort, health, happiness, or prosperity of any people, so far as it can be consistently done, bring models and drafts, and let the machinery be built where it is used, which will save great expense in transportation, particularly in heavy machinery and tools and implements generally. The brethren must recollect that from this point they pass through a savage country, and their safety depends on the good firearms and plenty of ammunition, and then they may have their teams run off in open daylight as we have had, unless they shall watch closely and continually. The presidents of the various branches will cause this epistle to be read to those under their counsel, and give such instruction in accordance therewith as the Spirit shall dictate, teaching them to live by every principle of righteousness, walk humbly before God, doing His will in all things, that they may have His Spirit to lead them and assist them speedily to the gathering place of the saints. Let the seventies, high priests, elders, priests, teachers, and deacons report themselves immediately on the arrival in, at the bluffs to the presidency of their respective quorums, if present, and if not, to the presidency or council of the place, that their names may be registered with their quorum, and that they may be known among their brethren. It is the duty of all parents to train up their children in the way they should go, instructing them in every correct principle so fast as they are capable of receiving, and setting, and setting an example worthy of imitation, for the Lord holds parents responsible for the conduct of their children until they arrive at the years of accountability before them, and the parents will have to answer for all misdemeanors arising through their neglect. Mothers should teach their little ones to pray as soon as they are able to talk. Presiding elders should be particular to instruct parents concerning their duty, and teachers and deacons should see that they do it. It is very desirable that all the saints should improve every opportunity of securing at least a copy of every valuable treatise on education, every book, map, chart, or diagram that may contain interesting, useful, and attractive matter to gain the attention of children and cause them to love to learn to read, and also every historical, mathematical, philosophical, geographical, geological, astronomical, scientific, practical, and all other variety of useful and interesting writings, maps, etc., to present to the general church recorder when they shall arrive at their destination, from which important and interesting matter may be gleaned to compile the most valuable works on every science and subject for the benefit of the rising generation. We have a printing press, and any who can take good printing or writing paper to the valley will be blessing themselves and the church. We also want all kinds of mathematical and philosophical instruments, together with all rare specimens of natural curiosity and works of art that can be gathered and brought to the valley, where, and from which, the rising generation can receive instruction. And if the saints will be diligent in these matters, we will soon have the best and the most useful and attractive museum on the earth. Let every elder keep a journal and gather historical facts concerning the church and world, with specific dates, and present the same to the historian. Also, let the presiding officer of every emigrating company immediately on arrival see that his clerk presents the recorder with the perfect list of the names of every soul, the number of wagons, teams, and every living thing in his camp, and let all saints organize at and travel from the Pottawatomie district, according to the pattern which will there be given them. Since the murder of President Joseph Smith, many false prophets and false teachers have arisen and tried to deceive many, during which time we have, we have mostly tarried with the body of the church, or been seeking a new location, leaving those prophets and teachers to run their race undisturbed, who have died natural deaths or committed suicides, 
and we now have it in contemplation soon to reorganize the church according to the original pattern with the first presidency and patriarch and feel that it will be a privilege of the twelve ere long to spread abroad among the nations not to hinder the gathering but to preach the gospel and push the people the honest and heart together from the four quarters of the earth the saints in western california who choose are at liberty to remain and all who may hereafter arrive on the western coast may exercise their privilege of tarrying in that vicinity or of coming to headquarters the saints on the society and other islands of the pacific are at liberty to tarry where they are for the time being or until further notice and we will send them more elders as soon as we can but if a few of their young or middle-aged intelligent brethren wish to visit us at the basin we bid them godspeed and shall be happy to see them the saints in australia china and the east indies generally will do well to ship to the most convenient port of the united states and from thence make to this point and pursue the same course as do others or if they find it more convenient they may ship to western california we wish the traveling elders throughout the world to remember the revelations of the doctrine and covenants and say not to this generation but repentance and if men have faith to repent lead them into the waters of baptism lay your hands upon them for the reception of the holy ghost confirm them in the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints comfort their hearts teach them the principles of righteousness and uprightness between man and man administer to them bread and wine in the remembrance of the death of jesus christ and if they want further information tell them to flee to zion there the servants of god will be ready to wait upon them and teach them all things that pertain to salvation and anything beyond this in your teaching cometh of evil for it is not required at your hands but leadeth you into snares and temptations which tendeth to condemnation should any ask where is zion tell them in america and if any ask what is zion tell them the pure in heart it is the duty of the rich saints everywhere to assist the poor according to their ability to gather and if they choose with the covenant and promise that the poor thus helped shall repay as soon as they are able it is the duty of the rich those who have the intelligence and the means to come home forthwith and establish factories and all kinds of machineries that will tend to give employment to the poor and produce those articles which are necessary for the comfort convenience health and happiness of the people and no one need to be at a loss concerning his duty in these matters if you will walk so humbly before god as to keep the small still whisperings of the holy ghost within him continually let all saints who love god more than their own dear selves and none else are saints gather without delay to the place appointed bringing their gold their silver their copper their zinc their tin and brass and iron and choice steel and ivory and precious stones their curiosities of science of art of nature of everything in their possession or within their reach to build in strength and stability to beautify to adorn and embellish to delight and to cast a fragrance over the house of the lord with sweet instruments of music and melody and songs and fragrance and sweet odors and beautiful colors whether it be in precious jewels or minerals or choice ores or in wisdom or in knowledge or understanding manifested in carved work or curious workmanship of the box the fir the pine tree or anything that ever was or is or is to be for the exaltation glory honor and salvation of the living and the dead for time and for all eternity come then walking in righteousness before god and your labor shall be accepted the kings will be your nursing fathers and queens will be your nursing mothers and the glory of the whole earth shall be yours in connection with all those who shall keep the commandments of god or else the bible those ancient prophets who prophesied from generation to generation and which the present generation profess to believe must fail for the time has come for the saints to go up to the mountain of the lord's house and help to establish it upon the tops of the mountains and the name of the Lord shall be there, and the glory of the Lord will be there, and the excellency of the Lord will be there, and the honor of the Lord will be there, and the exaltation of his saints will be there, and they will be held as in the hollow of his hand, and be hid as in the cleft of the rock, when the overflowing scourge of Jehovah shall go through to depopulate the earth, and lay waste the nations because of their wickedness, and cleanse the land from pollution and blood. We are at peace with all nations, with all kingdoms, with all powers, with all governments, with all authorities under the whole heavens except the kingdom and power of darkness which are from beneath and are ready to stretch forth our arms to the four quarters of the globe extending salvation to every honest soul for our mission in the gospel of jesus christ is from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth 
and the blessing of the Lord is upon us, and when every other arm shall fail, the power of the Almighty will be manifest in our behalf. For we ask nothing but what is right, we want nothing but what is right, and God has said that our strength shall be equal to our day. And we invite all presidents and emperors and kings and princes and nobles and governors and rulers and judges and all nations, kindreds, tongues and people under the whole heaven to come and help us to build a house in the name of the God of Jacob, a place of peace, a city of rest, a habitation for the oppressed of every clime, even for those who love their neighbor as they do themselves, and who are willing to do as they would be done unto. And this we are determined to do, and we will do, God being our helper, and we will help every one that will help to sustain good and wholesome laws for the protection of virtue and punishment of vice. The kingdom which we are establishing is not of this world, but is the kingdom of the great God. It is the fruit of righteousness, of peace, of salvation to every soul that will receive it, from Adam down to his last posterity. Our good will is toward all men, and we desire their salvation in time and eternity, and we will do them good so far as God will give us the power, and men will permit us the privilege, and we will harm no man, but if men will rise up against the power of the Almighty to overthrow his cause, let them know assuredly that they are running on the bosses of Jehovah's buckler, and as God lives, they will be overthrown. Come then, ye saints, come then, ye honorable men of the earth, come then, ye wise, ye learned, ye rich, ye noble, according to the riches and wisdom and knowledge of the great Jehovah, from all nations and kindreds and kingdoms and tongues and people and dialects on the face of the whole earth, and join the standard of Emmanuel and help us to build the kingdom of God and establish the principles of truth, life, and salvation, and you shall receive your reward among the sanctified when the Lord Jesus Christ cometh to make up his jewels, and no power on earth or in hell can prevail against you. The kingdom of God consists in correct principles, and it mattereth not what a man's religious faith is, whether he be a Presbyterian, or a Methodist, or a Baptist, or a Latter-day Saint, or Mormon, or a Campbellite, or a Catholic, or Episcopalian, or Mahometan, or even Pagan, or anything else, if he will bow the knee, and with his tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ, and will support good and wholesome laws for the regulation of society, we hail him as a brother, and will stand by him while he stands by us in these things. For every man's religious faith is a matter between his own soul and his God alone. But if he shall deny Jesus, if he shall curse God, if he shall indulge in debauchery and drunkenness and crime, if he shall lie and swear and steal, if he shall take the name of the great God in vain and commit all manner of abominations, he shall have no place in our midst. For we have long sought to find a people that will work righteousness, that will distribute justice equally, that will acknowledge God in all their ways, that will regard those sacred laws and ordinances which are recorded in that sacred book called the Bible, which we verily believe, and which we proclaim to the ends of the earth. We ask no preeminence, we want no preeminence, but where God has placed us there we will stand, and that is, to be one with our brethren, and our brethren are those that keep the commandments of God, that do the will of our Father who is in heaven, and by them we will stand, and with them we will dwell in time and eternity. Come then, ye saints of latter day, and all ye great and small, wise and foolish, rich and poor, noble and ignoble, exalted and persecuted, rulers and ruled of the earth, who love virtue and hate vice, and help us to do this work which the Lord hath required at our hands, and inasmuch as the glory of the latter house shall exceed that of the former, your reward shall be an hundredfold, and your rest shall be glorious. Our universal motto is, Peace with God and good will to all men. Written at Winter Quarters, Omaha Nation, West Bank of Missouri River, near Council Bluffs, North America, and signed December 23, 1847, in behalf of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Brigham Young, President. Willard Richards, Clerk.